Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to New School Classics. We're back again with the R8 today with five things I hate about this R8. I should rate the hate. Rate the hate. So first thing I'm gonna get into what I hate about this car. And when I say hate guys, I don't mean I hate this car at all. It is absolutely an honor and a privilege to drive this car from Audi. This is a beautiful car. When I say there's five things I hate about this car, like with any car, with any car there's gonna be some things that, you know, is gonna be different from maybe another car. So these are the five things I do hate about this particular one. The first one being automatic transmission. It's a lot faster. Yes, this is a dual clutch transmission. It is great, it is super fast, but you know, I just, there's something about rowing those gears and uh, the durability of a, of a manual transmission car. And this, you know, only comes in automatic, the second generation RAs, they only come with the dual clutch seven speed transmission. It is what it is, you know, sometimes it gets a little, I won't quite say boring driving this car, but sometimes, you know, you're just pushing a pedal and turning a wheel. It's just what it is, you know. Next thing I hate about this car, the suspension. Even in comfort mode, guys, honestly, the suspension stiffness of this car is still pretty stiff. Um, I often have to switch it back and forth right here between the modes drive select so I'll have comfort I'll have individual auto and uh, dynamic which is like the sport mode so comfort mode loosens up the suspension a little bit goes easy on the accelerator and all that whenever I'm riding on pretty much any public road I always find myself while driving every couple of seconds, hurrying up and switching it to comfort mode before I hit like a bump. An effort to try to spare stress fractures in the, the carbon fiber monocoque or, you know, just overall wear to my suspension components. You know, you don't wanna be uh, hitting bumps at, at 90 miles an hour with the stiffest suspension setting on. So that's kind of another little pet peeve I have about, about this car, is that I'm always playing with this. And whenever the road gets nice, I'm switching it to dynamic, and whenever I see it getting bad, I have to hurry up and switch it to comfort. And that's every time I drive this car. You can't just leave it in dynamic, and you can't just leave it in comfort, because comfort is slow. And yeah, you know, so basically whenever you want to go fast in this car, you have to put it in dynamic mode, but you also have to make sure you're not on a street that's going to kill your suspension and your chassis. Next thing I hate about this 2018 R8 is the roof does not come off. And yes, I know this is a race car. I know it, it needs to be uh, rigid. You know, there's no hard top. You either get the spider or you get the coupe with the R8. That's it. There's no hard top, removable top. There's no sunroof either. It's not an option. And I intentionally bought the coupe because I prefer to have a more rigid cockpit in a race car unless it's a hard top. My favorite car besides this car, I'm going to have to say if it's on a lower level than this car, it's going to be the C7 Z06 or ZR1. Those cars have the removable tops and you can get them in the manual transmission for half the price of this car. Um, it, it won't be as fast as this car in a lot of circumstances, but the bang you get for the buck, I think with the Z06 is almost unbeatable because you get a, a hard removable top, manual transmission, 650 horsepower, 650 foot pound of torque race car with an almost 50-50 even weight distribution with the engine up front, the transaxle in the back. You can see on the channel, I had a 2018 Corvette Z06 
um, for about a year. Decisions come and go, and then you wind up with this years later, which is fine. But I do miss having a removable top um, from the Corvette, and I do miss rowing my gears as we talked about earlier. I'd get both if I could afford it, guys. I would just have this right here, and then I'd have the Z06 right next to it if I had it my way. But I'm not rich, as many of you, you may think I am. Next thing I hate about this R8 is the price. The price of this car. When I say I hate the price of this car, I'm talking about insurance and gas. I knew what the price of this car was when I bought it. I thought it was a fair price. I still think it's a fair price for this car. I paid 138000 after taxes out the door for this 2018 Audi R8 RWS. 5.2 liter mid-engine V10 dual clutch S-Tronic transmission with 6K miles out the door for 138,000. The car was listed at 129, but taxes, you know, was about nine grand for this baby. I'm more struggling with the, the insurance and the gas. When I initially bought this car, I did not check prices for insurance, kind of like DDE on their P1, and I assumed that uh, I was gonna be able to get a reasonable rate or at the worst case scenario, a reasonable collector's policy rate, like Haggerty or one of those companies that will insure your car given you don't exceed a certain amount of mileage per year. Um, but what actually turned out happening was after I got this car, I called Haggerty thinking I was about to get this policy and they will not even insure it regardless of my record, regardless of anything. They do not want to insure this car. They don't want to touch it. It's too expensive. It's too exotic. They don't want to do it. And you know what they said? The reasoning was my driving experience with exotics hasn't been long enough. I said, but you guys insured me for like over a year, just a year ago on a 650 horsepower Corvette. Their answer was, that's not an exotic, sir. Which I understand, it's not an exotic, but it is what it is, guys. I couldn't get the Haggerty policy, so now I'm stuck with Allstate, and Allstate is the best rate I can get on this car. Everybody else wants to charge way more, but it's still pretty high for a monthly insurance payment you don't wanna know. And if you must know, $640 a month for me, insurance. The gas too, guys, the gas in this thing, it, if I drive this car daily, this car will cost me $150 in gas a week, okay? Premium gas only, right? And this car gets about 13 miles to the gallon with this massive V10 back here. So, 13 miles to the gallon on premium gas is not that great. Um, so yeah, we got insurance at 640 a month, plus gas, we're talking 150 a week. I mean, we're talking over $1,200 just in expenses not even related to purchasing the car. Gas and insurance, okay? And we wanna talk about money for this car? Hoo wee! Well, unfortunately, I was unlucky enough to buy this car used with 6K miles um, from Audi Atlanta, not knowing that uh, the tires and the brakes were just about done. Me also thinking that this is the most affordable supercar doesn't mean that it's cheap. Just to give you an idea, guys, my car needs basically all new brakes right now. And I'm like, okay, so let me just get the pads changed. Can't be that much. Well. If you want just the pads changed, um, one, two, three, four brake pads changed, that's gonna look you at about $1,300 after install. Um, now, if you're talking like Audi is talking and like other performance shops are talking, when you call them and say, hey, I wanna just do brake pads on my R8, they always say, oh, well, you're supposed to change the rotors too because 
rotors are supposed to be a certain millimeters of thickness. Now, using my best judgment, I'm going to say my rotors are still within that parameter of thickness considering the car only has 11K miles on it and it's a 2018. <laughs> But if we listen to Audi and uh, other places advice on how we should go about servicing the brakes on this car, they would suggest that we change all the pads, all the rotors and the sensors. So you're talking about a grand total of over $5,500 after install. <laughs> I just put all new tires on it. Mind you, they're not the Pirelli P0 tires because those will wear out in 5K miles. I went ahead and got the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's all around. And as you can see, this the, the fronts are 245 30ZR20s and the rears are um, 305 30ZR20. And that cost me about $2,500 after buying all the tires and getting them balanced and getting an alignment. $2,500. If I would have went to the Audi dealership, we would have been looking at about eh, three, four grand just for the tires. So the car is probably the most affordable supercar. Yeah, it's just not quite affordable because you're talking maintenance, you're talking gas, you're talking insurance plus a potential car payment. Hoo-wee. I'm so glad I live in a house that I own because there's no way I would have this car right now if I did not own this house because I would be making a rent payment and this car would be getting repoed. The number one thing I hate about this car, I have to say guys, is it seems like whenever you take this car to places, um, me being a younger guy, um, it seems like people, some people will get almost offended, um, you know, and uh, it seems like some people will want to charge you more maybe than what the going rate is for whatever you're doing. Um, it's kind of like you have a target on your head. You drive around in this car, you want to go buy something from somebody, they see you pull up in this, they're going to charge you double because they know you can afford it kind of thing. And uh, that's, I think, the biggest problem I've been having with this car. It, it, it attracts a lot of attention. You can tell it's an expensive car, even though it's not as flashy as a Lamborghini. Um, you can tell it's an expensive car. People automatically assume I'm a millionaire and, you know, people will follow me. People will, you know, ask me for money. People will try to charge me more for stuff that I know isn't that expensive. And that's about it, guys. But everything else is dope. I love the car, but those are five things I hate about this 2018 Audi R8 RWS. Thanks for watching, guys. If you wanna see five things I love about my R8, be sure to watch that one next.